Hey, you guys. Welcome to Talk About It Thursdays. I am your host, Karen Bailey. Let me know when you guys are on, and then we will get started for today. Give everybody just another couple of minutes. Hello, hello. Let me know who you are. I see a couple of eyes on, on the top of the screen. Happy Thursday, everybody. I'd love to say hello to you if you want to put a comment in the chat. Hey, Tasha. Welcome, 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 sweetheart. Hope you're having an amazing week so far. It's a holiday weekend coming up. I hope everybody's got a three-day weekend or at least going to have a little bit of downtime this weekend. We deserve it. We work hard. We need Labor Day off. We need to re reset, you know, because we still got a few more months left in the year, you guys. It's hard for me to believe that it's the end of August already. I still remember New Year's, so, but it is what it is. Time waits for no man. You guys, last week we talked about, can you handle my battle scars? You know, I hope that gave you guys some insight and kind of helped you see yourself and see some areas where, you know, you still have scars and you still need to heal, but you need to surround yourself with people that don't judge you, people that don't belittle you, people that don't make you feel bad simply because you're not completely healed yet. We have to learn to surround ourselves with people that uplift us, people that help strengthen us, not people who talk about the problem, but people who talk about the solution. So we've got to be careful, you guys, when we're going through, when we're trying to get over something, when we're trying to heal. You can't share that with everybody. Everybody doesn't want to see you healed. You know, and a lot of times that's really sad because sometimes it could even be your family member. It could be your friends. They don't want to see you healed. They like seeing you broken. Hey, Michael, they like seeing you broken. So be careful you know, who you share those things with if you're still trying to heal. And make sure you're praying about it. And God will put those people in your life that'll help you get stronger, that'll help you progress rather than digress. So you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Because y'all know I like to be on time as much as possible. Uh, I was able to get me a phone. That way, the video is not bad today. But our topic is, even when it's uncomfortable, He's still God. You know, a lot of times we we start thinking, you know, well, you know, is God mad at me? Is God upset with me? No, that's not what it is. God is still God no matter what you're going through. God is still God even though it seems like this world is just doing its own thing and everything's crazy. There's a purpose and a plan for everything. We don't think like God. Our mind is not high enough to think like he thinks. He has a plan for it all, and he's in control of it all. And it's easy to believe that being comfortable in life is where everybody wants to end up. But being comfortable is not always God's plan for us. You know, that's man's plan. Oh, I just want to get somewhere and sit down, get to a point in my life where I can sit and I relax. I don't have to do anything if I don't want to do anything. But when I look at that, when I hear people say that and people that have tried to do that, they are so bored. They are, they are always looking for something to do because you're not meant to be still. You're not meant to be over in a corner not doing anything. God gave you life, breath, strength for you to do something with that. It's not meant to be. He talks about a light, you know, that it is not supposed to be hidden. So if you're a light, there's always something for you to do. You may change up what you do, what you do later on may not be as strenuous as what you did when you were young but don't ever get to the point where you're okay with being comfortable comfortable doesn't accomplish anything you guys and god is always taking us to that next thing in life god is about the next thing you know once he gets you past one thing there's always something else god wants you to do there's always another level he wants to take you to he never just leaves you in one place for your whole life. God doesn't believe in you being comfortable like that. He wants you to have an abundant life, but he also wants you moving and growing and changing throughout your life. And then the uncomfortable is the only time 
you progress and grow. Most people don't grow and won't move forward unless they get uncomfortable where they are right now, unless they get dissatisfied, or unless they get upset about where they are now. Most of the time, you won't do anything without some discomfort in your life. It's just like children. And see, I'm from the old school where they used to whoop children. You know, our motivation to do right was the fact that we didn't want to get a whipping. But without that motivation there, without that threat that if you act up, you're going to get a whipping, what motivation did we have to behave? It's the same thing in life. What motivation do you have to move forward, to, to reach for that next thing if you're comfortable where you are? If there's nobody... Uh, oppressing you or nobody, uh, there's no opposition. That's the word I'm looking for. If there's no opposition where you are, why would you even want to move? So God has to let some opposition in your life, some discomfort in your life, some dis dis dissatisfaction in your life in order sometimes to get us to move to that next level. And we have to start embracing what's next and the things that aren't easy. Because you know what? That's right. You have to pick your own switch, Michael. <laughs> and it better not break. That's all I got to say. Anybody that know about a switch that breaks, and y'all hear me. Y'all hear me. But, you know, we got to start embracing what's not easy. Because that's when God works. God works in the hard stuff. If you can do it on your own, there's not a whole lot God has to do. But God likes to get his hands in that hard stuff, that stuff where you say, God... I surrender. I, I can't do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. God sharpens his teeth on things like that. He's ready to get up in there on things like that. But as long as we feel like we can handle it ourselves and we don't need God, there's not a whole lot for him to do. But the moment we reach out and make him a part of it, God is going to go to work. And he loves to do it in those big things, those overwhelming things that happen in our life. That way, he gets the glory out of it because when God steps in and makes a way out of no way, you can't do nothing but thank him. You can't do nothing but give him the credit for that. And that's what God wants. That's what God likes. And there's a seed time and there's a harvest time. You can't do either one of those things all the time. That's not going to be good for the crop. That's not going to be good for your life. You can't be sowing seed all the time and never reaping a harvest. You can't be pulling up a harvest and never sowing the seed because you're going to run out. So those things go hand in hand. But you can't do both of them at the same time all the time. And don't think that God has left you just because you're going through something. You know, a lot of times we don't believe God when he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You know, that that's a hard concept to believe you guys because we're human and we see people drop the ball on us all the time. So it is a hard thing. It is a spiritual thing. It is something that whew, you got to turn your, your logical thinking off to. Because can you imagine somebody that will never leave you, never forsake you, no matter what you do? That is unimaginable. That's unfathomable, if that's a word. You know, you just can't fathom the greatness of his love for somebody that will never leave you or forsake you, no matter what you do. But you will leave him. We do it all the time. When God is not moving fast enough for, for us or God is not giving us what we want, we leave God all the time. And God is so patient. And that's what I love about him. He's so patient. He waits on us for years, decades, however long while we out in the club, while we out doing all kinds of stuff. You know, he waits for us to come back just like that dad, you know, with that prodigal son. God is that, that dad that he gets so excited when you do finally get your senses about you and you come back and he's waiting with open arms. That's why I say even when it's uncomfortable, even when you're wrong, God is still God. Hey, Lynn, God is still God. And so you have to understand a lot of things in our life happen to us because of words, because of thoughts. You know, when we start thinking things, those negative things, when we start thinking those things that, that we know we have no business thinking. 
and then those thoughts become your words because after a while we're not just thinking about we're telling somebody about it girl what you think about if i do this what do you think about if i do that so a lot of times words bring us into situations you know we we want to say you know god why are you letting this happen to me think back what were you thinking before you got into that what were you saying before you got into that God had to give me a reality check on that. And a lot of things in my life, I thought of them first. A lot of those bad things that happened, I talked myself into a whole lot of situations. It didn't have nothing to do with God allowing it to happen to me. I thought about it. Then I started talking about it. Then I started walking in it. So we have to understand that words, if words can bring you to it, words can also take it away. You know, you don't develop low self-esteem by yourself. You got to have some thoughts. Maybe some people said words to you that hurt you, but you internalize those thoughts. And then you started talking bad about yourself. And when you start talking bad about yourself, then you start feeling bad about yourself. And then other people start looking at you differently and treating you differently. So that's how those words are brought to you. But the words can also take it away. When you start speaking different, about yourself when you start telling folks how you love yourself and how you you know that you can do all things through christ who strengthens you when you start doing that that self-esteem that low self-esteem has got to go so your words the same way it got you into that problem your words can get you out of it that lack of confidence it came from somewhere it came from a thought it came from a worry that you weren't good enough somewhere in your mind and somewhere you heard somebody say that you weren't good enough and you internalized that thing and then you started saying to yourself I'm not good enough I don't think I can do this I don't think I'm strong enough I don't think I'm pretty enough you know you started saying those things to yourself somewhere along the way it was the words that you were saying to yourself that caused you to end up in that situation. And the same way those words got you into that lack of confidence, your words can get you out of it. When you start believing God, where God says that you're more than a conqueror, you know, you can do anything but fail. That's that God that we serve. When we understand God is for us and he's fighting for us and he's always with us and it says God can never fail. So if God is with us, then we can never fail. But those are the things you have to start saying to yourself. You have to reverse the words that are coming out of your mouth and begin to understand if the words brought you to it, they can also take it away. That fear, whatever you're afraid of, that unforgiveness, it all started with a thought. And then you started telling people, I'm scared of this. I don't want to do this. I don't want this to happen. I'm worried about that. You started saying those things out of your own mouth, you know, and we do it subconscious. We do it so often we don't even think about it. But think back on something that you were afraid of and how you kept talking about it all the time. You made that thing bigger than what it was. You made that thing bigger than God because you allowed your, yourself to talk yourself into being more and more afraid and when you confront that thing i said in a topic before you have got to confront some things in your life those things you're afraid of you're going to have to stand up to it because that's the only way you're going to get that fear out of your life nobody's going to go with you nobody's going to hold your hand you have to do that for you you have to decide i deserve to be happy i deserve to have some peace in my life I deserve to not have to worry all the time, but it's only when you decide you deserve better. It's only when you start speaking about yourself and saying, I will not fear. God did not give me a spirit of fear. I'm no longer afraid of you. There's nothing you can do to me. You have to say those things to yourself. And then that unforgiveness, you guys, you know, we talk ourselves into not forgiving people. And I'm just as guilty as anybody else. And God has really dealt with me this week. And, and I'm taking some steps to take care of that issue. Because, you know, it's nothing like trying to talk to somebody about something and God is dealing with you on that same issue at the same time. Because it, it, it is really something. You know, even before I started this topic, God was starting to deal with me about some things about some people in my life that, that hurt me a long time ago and that 
even though I don't wish them anything bad in their life, even though I don't see them, I don't talk bad about them, deep down in my spirit, there was still a door to a closet called unforgiveness, you guys. And God gave me a peek into that closet. And so now I'm cleaning out that closet. I started today and I got some more cleaning to do when I get off this podcast. But you've got to decide that you don't want that heaviness in your life anymore. You got to decide to stop letting that voice remind you of what somebody did to you. That is water under the bridge. Hey, Yvette, water under the bridge. We have got to let go of what people did and how they did it to us, what they said to us. We've got to let that past stuff go. Is it easy? No, it's not. But you know what? Since I've started my process of letting go, I feel so much better. And I'm looking forward to letting some more things go because I don't want that heaviness in my life. I need to have room in every aspect of my life for God to, to, to fill it with what he wants to fill it with. That's right, Michael, because if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. And so he's been reminding me of that this week. And even though I don't want to forgive, and there's some things people can do to you, and if you be real about it, you don't want to forget it. You don't want to forgive them. But who are you hurting? Who are you chaining up? Who are you putting behind those walls of forgiveness? Who are you putting in their own prison? You. Because those other people ain't thinking about you. They don't forgot all about what they did to you. You're only hurting yourself by not letting go. And as hard as it is, sometimes we have to make the decision to swallow our pride and forgive people and let them go. But we talk ourselves into hating people just those thoughts in our heads and then we start talking out of our mouth we talk we talk ourselves into unforgiveness by reminding ourselves all the time what other people did but like i said if you can talk yourself into it you can talk yourself out of it you've got to decide that you want to let that stuff go and you've got to make a point of letting people know i forgive you i forgive you i did that this morning that person said i don't even remember all of that that's okay the fact that I did and I was still holding on to it for 30-something years and still hurting and crying behind it, that means it was holding me, and I had to let that go. And it was simple as confronting the situation and saying, I don't want it anymore, I forgive you. And you got to mean that from your heart. Because once you do it and you truly mean it, you're going to feel the difference. And are there seasons of discomfort in our life? Yes. There are. There are going to be times where we feel like we're on top of the world, you guys. Everything is going our way. The sun is shining on us. I mean, we're glowing everywhere we go. But yes, there's going to be some times of discomfort, too. And we've got to expect that because life is not a bed of ease, you guys. There's going to be good times, and there's going to be some sad times, and then there's going to be some uncomfortable times. But in all of that, God is still God. And in times of transition, that's another time where you get real uncomfortable when you feel God tugging on you, pulling on you, saying, you know, this is not the person you're supposed to be. I want to mold you. I want to change you into something better. That is a hard time. That is a hard time. That is an awkward time because you really don't know what God is doing. You can't explain it to nobody. You don't know how you feel about it. Your emotions are all over the all over the place. You're vulnerable, you know, but God is the only one that knows what he's doing. And that's when that trust has to come in, even when you can't explain it, you know, to everybody else. Everybody's like, oh, why are you acting like that? Why you don't want to go nowhere? Why you ain't doing what you used to do? Sometimes you don't have an answer. Sometimes God is just cleaning you. He's filtering some things off of you. And sometimes it makes you feel insecure because you want what's familiar. You want what feels safe to you. And sometimes God will put you out there in an unfamiliar place, in an uncomfortable place where you can't see. You can't see the safety net around you. It's there, but you can't see it. So understand that in times of tr transition, when you're having to make those decisions about your life, when you're having to make a decision to move forward instead of staying where you are, 
those are going to be some uncomfortable times and you're going to start being anxious about it. So that's the time when you need to really pray to God and God and tell God, God, I know you're doing something. Help my spirit stay calm while you're doing it. Help me understand that I don't have to know everything because you know how we are. We're control free. We want to know step A, B, C, D, and E, you know, but God doesn't operate like that. He might give you a glimpse of B and then you might have to step out on faith on C. You know, we just don't know what he's going to do. So in times of transition, that's, that's a time of discomfort for most of us. Number two, we don't like to change. Anytime God is forcing us to give up something or, or, or forcing us to change a behavior or even change our circle, you know, we don't like to do that. It's painful to let people go. It's painful to let go of things that you like to do, even if you know you shouldn't be doing it. It's hard to let go of stuff that you like. And while you're going through a different change in your life, why God is taking things away from you, learn to accept yourself for who you are and understand that you're not perfect. Understand that you're going to make mistakes. Understand that God does not expect you to be a cookie cutter version of Jesus. We can't be Jesus, you guys. As much as we want to be Jesus, we've got too much temptation. We've got too much flesh in this world. So understand, accept yourself for where you're at, but don't get satisfied with that. Don't be comfortable messing up. When you mess up, fess up and tell God, I'm sorry, I'm going to try to do better. But don't get comfortable messing up just saying, oh, well, I'm human. You know, Don't do that. God knows your heart. He knows when you're really sincere about when you really want to stay on track. And then B, remember it takes time and experience to move into a new role. That's even moving into the person God wants you to be. You know, it takes time and experience to learn a new role. It, it takes time to learn how to move different. It takes time to learn how to talk different, you know, to how to carry yourself different. That stuff doesn't happen overnight. So give yourself a break when you don't feel like you got it all together in one day or one week or even one year. Give yourself time to work the process and understand in time, you're going you're gonna to fit right into that new role. But on the way, enjoy the journey. Don't nitpick everything you do. Don't, don't feel like you know, you're not good enough along the way just because you don't measure up to everybody else. Keep, keep your eyes on your own paper and stop looking over at what everybody else is doing and work your own process. And then accept things Accept the fact that things might feel and look a little strange for a while. When you're doing something different, something you've never done before, you're not going to be comfortable with it. You're just going to have to step out and do it because you're trying to move to a new level. So it's not going to feel comfortable. But when you know you've got to move forward, you know you've got to branch off and do something because it's going to help you grow, it's okay that it doesn't feel comfortable to you. It doesn't feel like you got it all together. That's normal. All of that stuff takes time and all of that stuff is part of the process. And at the same time, when you're going through your season of discomfort, make sure you take care of yourself. You know, sometimes when we're going through something that's hurting us or, or that's stretching us, sometimes we'll start neglecting ourselves. We'll be forgetting to eat. We'll be uh, forgetting to get enough sleep, not drinking enough water, all that stuff. You have got to keep your body strong as you're going through the changes in life. Even the discomfort in your life, you need to get your strength about yourself because you never know when you're going to need it. And transition can take your mind and your body to places you've never been before. And sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves while we're going through and see, this is where your friends come in. You know, when you're going through something or, or when God is stretching you and, and moving you to another level, your true friends, they'll recognize when you don't seem like you've been taking care of yourself. They might call you and say, hey, girl, have you ate? Hey, you've been drinking your water. You've been getting enough sleep. They see them bags under your eyes where you've been crying because transition will have you in tears. Because sometimes you won't understand what God is doing. And sometimes it's natural for us to cry about it because 
we feel like we don't have any control. But those friends in our life are the ones that are going to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. And they're going to be keeping their eye out to see if there's any signs that you need somebody to encourage you to do better as far as your eating and your resting and you're taking care of yourself. Because you really can't afford to let yourself get run down while you're going through a season of discomfort. Because you're going to need all your strength about you to be able to, to know when it's time to do something different. If you're already weak and you're tired, the enemy is going to get in your ear. You have to keep your body strong. you got to keep your spirit strong so the enemy doesn't try to come in and whisper in your ear. You don't want to hear anybody's voice but the voice of God. Number four, assess your priorities and practice good boundaries, you guys. Times of transition, even the good transition, they kind of throw you off. They throw you off because it throws you off of your routine. And so learn to make some adjustments and understand that you might not be able to do everything you used to do when God is changing your life or changing you. So you need to learn how to prioritize what's most important in your life. What do I really need to be doing? And what can I let go of because it was just a distraction? And so those new adjustments in your life are going to take some extra energy. So you got to free yourself up. You can't be 10 different places while God is trying to move you to the next level. You got to get somewhere where you can be still, get somewhere where you can hear from God, get somewhere where you can make good decisions. So take a look at your commitments and decide what's most important in this season of your life. Just because you have to let it go right now doesn't mean you can't pick it up again. But right now in the season that you're in, there's no room for it. And God will start showing you things that, that you need to let go of in the particular season that you're in. And then give yourself permission to put all the rest of it to the side, to, to put some things on hold. You deserve to be able to say, hold up. I'm doing too much. I'm tired all the time. This is not how my life is supposed to be. I need some time, some quiet time, some time so that me and God can kind of get our thing together so I can make sure I'm going in the right direction, so I can make sure I'm doing the things that God is wanting me to do. You deserve to be able to say, hey, hold up. Just because you're dependable don't mean they can pull you in 10 or 20 different ways. You need to set some boundaries and say, you know what, right now in this season I'm going through, I need to back up off some things. Let me back up off some things because I can't do what I need to do, what's important to do because I'm doing all this little stuff. I'm doing all this extra stuff trying to keep other people happy because they expect me to do it because I've somehow obligated myself to do it. You have the right to change your mind and go back and say, you know what? I thought I could do this, but you know what? Let me see if I can get so-and-so to take my place because this is more on my plate than I need right now. You have to be in control of your life. Don't let worrying about who you let down or who's depending on you. You know what? If you weren't there, they would get somebody else. So guess what? You need to start speaking up for yourself when you're overwhelmed and let them get somebody else. It'll be okay because there may be a season in your life where you can come back and say, hey, I'll volunteer to do it. But if that's not where you are right now, give yourself permission to put some things on hold or either let it go all together. Don't be afraid to do that because you deserve to have the time that you need to get your life where God wants it to be. Hey, Miss Christelle. And then we are more likely to grow and enjoy our transition when we can focus our energy on what's important instead of all that other stuff around us. And number five, allow yourself to feel what you feel. You know, a lot of times when we're going through a transition or going through a bad situation or going through something uncomfortable, we always feel like we got to put on a brave face for everybody. And, you know, we were taught that. I know as a, as a black culture, you know, you always had to be strong. You know, men always, I feel sorry for you men. If there's any, Michael, I feel sorry for y'all because society doesn't allow y'all to feel. And that is wrong on all levels. 
I respect any man that's not afraid to let some tears fall sometime because you have got to be in touch with who you are and you have got to tune out what society says a man is and a man isn't because we already seen society society don't know what a man is from a you know whatever you know they don't have a clue they letting everybody be whatever they want to be anyway so stop listening to society and allow yourself to feel what you need to feel because in transition a lot of times god is just wanting to get to the depths of you and to that intimate place and when you get intimate with God some tears are gonna flow you're gonna feel things you've never felt before you're gonna you're gonna be more in tune with who you are so you can't worry about how you look to other people all the time when you're transitioning when you're moving to that next level you got to look ugly sometimes hey Christia you got to look ugly sometimes to get where you're trying to get to in life and sometimes it's not worth worrying about what other people think because people got their own opinion of you anyway. They always have their own opinion about what you're going through. It's amazing how many people have an opinion about something they know nothing about. So you have to allow yourself to feel whether you want to cry about it, whether you want to get mad about it. Do that. But then make sure that you're being honest with yourself and not putting on a brave face for everybody else. And transition often means letting go of one thing to embrace something else. And a lot of times, that's like I said before, that's hurtful. It's hurtful to let go of people. It's hurtful to let go of certain types of lifestyle. All of that hurts. So allow yourself to cry some tears at the same time embracing what's next. But allow yourself to feel whatever you need to feel, whether it's sad, whether it's happy, whether whether it's guilt. Feel a little guilt about moving on. That's okay. But don't let the guilt stop you. Don't let the guilt stop you. And then you may be emotional about it, whether happy or sad. Like I said, go ahead and cry your tears. You don't have to pretend that you don't have feelings. We all have feelings. That doesn't make you weak. If you have to get upset about something, get upset about it, but just control your actions. You know, there's nothing that says you have to put on a brave face for everybody. That's something society has told us. And then allow yourself to process what you have to leave behind. Because sometimes you don't get it when in the beginning, but then sometimes you will find yourself just boohooing over what you've had to leave behind, over over, maybe God made you move to another place. Sometimes you're going to miss home. Sometimes you're going to miss those old friends. Sometimes you're going to cry about those things. It's okay. Allow yourself to feel what you need to feel and process what you've left behind. But don't forget to celebrate the new things in your life at the same time. That's right, Christy. It hurts to let go. And then... Make sure you have a sense of humor about life. You know, sometimes we walk around, we are so serious, just like we're like a militant soldier. You know, everything in life has a purpose. And sometimes it's just funny, some of the stuff that happens. You're like, I don't know how I got myself in these situations. Sometimes you need to laugh at yourself just to release that stress and release that tension. Don't ever be so serious about life to where you can't let go and laugh about things sometimes because that'll help you get through a lot of those hard uncomfortable places you know a lot of times you know people uh, that don't know how to laugh at themselves they're uncomfortable about, uncomfortable about around people excuse me y'all uncomfortable around people that can laugh about things because they become judgmental and said, you know, she was laughing about that. I don't see nothing funny about that. You have to understand that we do some crazy stuff sometimes. And, and sometimes I said, you know, God, you must have a sense of humor because that's just crazy. You know, we get ourselves in so many things and sometimes you can't laugh about it when you're in it. But when you look back on it, some of it is funny as all get out because you know, you know better. 
than to have gotten into some of the stuff you've gotten into. And you have to learn to laugh because it helps relieve that tension. It helps relieve that feeling of guilt about what you've done or feeling uh, like, like you should have been smarter than that. You have to laugh about things in life and just know that God is going to work it out for your good. We all go through those seasons where we don't make good decisions, but just know that if you stick with God, he's going to pull you through to the other side. And see, God is always still God, even when life is uncomfortable. Sometimes we have to do what we don't want to do, you guys. I said that earlier. But we have to remember when God is unctioning us to do something, that his way is perfect. But it's not man's way. So don't try to make logic out of what God is telling you to do and try to make excuses for not doing it. We're bad about that. We got a million excuses for not doing what God has put in our heart to do because we really don't want to do it. And he doesn't think like us, just like he commands us to love our enemies. That don't make sense, not even a little bit, but he has a purpose for that. And God commands that we forgive those who mistreat or trespass against us. You know, he didn't stipulate to forgive those people who say they're sorry. He wants you to forgive the ones that are not sorry and will never say they're sorry. You know, those are those hard places. Those are those uncomfortable places. But God will be with you even in those places when you don't understand, when you don't want to do it. God is going to be there whispering to you, do it, daughter. Do it, son, because it's going to work out for your good. And he's going to remind you that he wouldn't ask you to do it if there wasn't something good that was going to come out of it. And we have to trust God in that way. And that takes time to trust him. But when you trust him in that way and just know, you know what, God, I'm going to do this for you. I said that before. Things I didn't want to do, people I didn't want to tell I was sorry. I said, God, I'm going to do this for you. Do it for him because he's going to bless you for it anyway. And then God wouldn't command you to do it without there being something better on the other side. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, I used to read that scripture and I was like, hmm, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because we always think what God is asking us to do is too much. We always think we're going to lose too much. We always think it's going to cost us too much. But when you finally do it, you guys, case in point. When God has ever spoken to y'all to say something to somebody and then later on that person come back and say, you know what, that day that you said this, that, and the other to me, you don't even know what I was going through. You don't know how much you blessed me. You don't know how much you helped me. There is no sacrifice in the world that's, that's greater than that, than knowing that you made a difference in somebody else's life. There is no stuff. There's no person, there's no feeling on this earth better than knowing that God used you to bless somebody else. So that obedience is better than sacrifice. God knows the end from the beginning. So when he's asking you to do something, he's already got something for you on the other side. You just can't see it. So we're always wanting to hold on to what we have because we don't know what's in the future. But God knows. That's why he wants you to be obedient anyway, because he's got something better for you than what you're holding on to, what you're afraid to sacrifice. So that's what he had to show me about that scripture. This little stuff that I was trying to hold on to ain't nothing compared to what God has in store for me. If I be obedient and just do what he tells me to do, he's got something that I can't even imagine on the other side. So just remember that God wouldn't command you to do it and especially those hard things those things that you just in your heart it just make you cry to do it have y'all ever done something or god told you to do something you didn't want to do it so bad you started crying that's happened to me that happened to me this week i didn't want to do it so i was crying like a baby but obedience was better than the sacrifice that i thought what i thought i was going to lose by doing it i didn't and on the other side of it was a blessing. Hey, William. So obedience is better than sacrifice, you guys. Even when you don't want to do it, if God tells you to do it, do it anyway. And number three, God uses the discomfort 
in your life to kill your flesh and strengthen your spirit, man. He has to break us sometimes, you guys. Sometimes we just think we got it going on. We are hard-headed. We just doing it, and we don't want nobody to try to tell us to do it any other way. And sometimes God has to break us because we're no longer humble. We're no longer teachable because we think we know everything. We think we got it all together. We don't need anybody else. So sometimes God has to put discomfort in our lives just to remind us, that he's God, that you don't have it all together, that you don't have all the answers. So sometimes when this flesh stands up with all that pride and all that bragging and all that look at me, sometimes God has to break that down and he lets discomfort come in your life. And he breaks you down from what you are to make you into something more beautiful. He never breaks you down to hurt you. He never breaks you down to leave you broken. God has never left anybody broken that he has ever had to let go through something. He don't leave you broken. He always takes whatever's broken and he molds it into something better. So just understand, sometimes God has to take us through something just to kill our flesh and to strengthen our spirit, man. Because sometimes we won't even consider God until we start going through stuff. Some people won't even pray until something happens to somebody. And then they all on Facebook, oh, pray, pray for this, pray for this, unspoken prayers, da 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 you know, but ain't talked about God in months and ain't talked to God in months. So sometimes God puts discomfort in our lives to remind us that he's still there. You need to recognize that he's still there. And then number four, instead of focusing on why me, you know, when we go through something, first, especially if it's something bad or something negative, first thing we say, why me? Why did this happen to me? We've got to start asking ourselves, you guys, why not me? Because when you think about it, We've all done so many things to, to anger God. We've all done so many things against God's will. And if you be honest about it, we've all done some stuff. And I thank God for grace and mercy every day. And it's not that I do bad stuff every day, but I don't do good stuff every day. And there's a sin of omission. When you do stuff, you don't do stuff when you know you should do it. You're also sinning in that way too. So just understand that nobody deserves God's grace and mercy. It's a gift. And when you look at it that way, then you can ask yourself, why not me? Because you think about everything Jesus went through on this earth, everything the apostles went through, you know, all of that simply because they were trying to spread the good news, simply because they were talking about God and preaching the word. You know, so you have to understand that you're no better than them and they were no better than you. So none of us are exempt from pain. None of us are exempt from discomfort. So rather than focusing on why me, we need to start asking ourselves, you know what? You know, why not me? You know, God has a reason for allowing this to happen in my life. Because when we ask, why me? We always think to ourselves, I don't deserve this. But think about it. Even when good things happen to you, if your self-esteem is not where it's supposed to be, you'll start thinking, why me? When good things happen. Because you're going to feel inside that you don't deserve it. So that goes with the good things and the bad. And then the why not me is saying, I, d I do deserve it. Because we know that we're not perfect. We know we've done a lot of things wrong. So if, if God chooses to allow things in our life, it's not like we don't deserve it. We do deserve it. But it's his grace and mercy that keeps things from happening to us. He covers us with that. He covers us with his blood. So when you say, why not me? When your confidence level is up, that means I do deserve it. I do deserve good things to happen in my life. So that goes both ways with the good and the bad. And number five, don't let the situation control you. You have to take control of the situation. You know, we, all, we can't always, you know, control what happens to us, but we are in total control of how we respond to it. You know, and I think about, you know, how devastated we get when something first happens and we just break down crying, especially us women. We just break down crying. We might fall down on the floor. We might fall with our 
uh, head and our hands, but there's something on the inside. God don't let you stay there long. There's something on the inside that will make you rise up, make you raise your head and wipe your tears and say, okay, okay, I got to deal with this. Okay, okay. And then you begin to allow that inner man to strengthen you so that you can get up from whatever has just happened to you and you can start strategizing of how you need to take control of that situation. So God always puts that within us, especially a child of God. He puts that inner strength in you that even when you've broken down at some point God is going to raise you back up and he's going to have you wiping those tears and having you getting up shaking your hand knowing that okay okay this is what I need to do because you got to think you got to think about your next move that's how you get control of the situation you got to clear your head you got to clear those emotions so that you can think and God has a way of giving us that inner strength, even when we don't understand where it even came from, so that we can get up and do what we need to do. This is how people are able to bury their loved ones when they're deep in emotion and they're able to get up and they are able to make the funeral arrangements. They're able to do what they need to do. That's not them. That's not their flesh. That is God working within them because that kind of pain you don't get up from that kind of pain, not without God, not without God unctioning in your spirit and giving you what you need to, to get up and do what you need to do. So understand that you can either allow the situation to control you or you can control the situation. It's all up to you. So if you're uncomfortable right now, remember there's a lesson in everything, you guys. There is no, nothing God will take us through that there's not a lesson somewhere. You just have to look for it sometimes. And just understand, if you're dealing with issues with your health, keep the faith. Don't think God has forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you. You've got to hold on. Because God is teaching you how to depend on Him even when you're uncomfortable. And God begins to prune us. Number two, sometimes God is just pruning us. That's why he allows things to happen. Hey, Sandra, whether it be with our health, whether it be with our relationships, sometimes that discomfort comes from God just trying to pull some things off of you, trying to get some things out of your life and that you won't get rid of unless he puts you in an uncomfortable place. But even with that, God is still there. He hasn't left you. God is still God. Okay? And then number three, we have to count it a privilege, you guys, that God cares enough about us to not let us get comfortable all the time. He doesn't leave us in a comfortable place because God knows there's so much more inside of each and every one of us than even what we're doing right now. What I'm doing right now, this is only probably an eighth of what God has in store for my life. And I feel like I'm doing a lot, but this is nothing. So I'm not allowed to get comfortable where I'm at because God says, you got to keep learning. You got to keep growing. So we have to count that a privilege that God has put something so great in us that he doesn't allow us to just sit around and watch everybody else. We've got to do what we've got to do because God has some things in us that we haven't even tapped into yet. Number four, if you're uncom uncomfortable being single or, or being alone, keep the faith. Anytime you're by yourself, anytime you don't have those extra distractions, God is preparing you. God is helping you to learn who you are and helping you to learn who he is. That way, when you do connect with somebody else, you won't be dependent on them. You'll still be dependent on God. And when two people depending on God come together, that's that trinity. That's that, that threefold cord that's not easily broken. Because when God is in the middle of it, it's not going to be broken. But you have to have your own relationship with God. And that person has to have their own relationship to God, with God. And then together, you'll grow your relationship. But one can't be dragging the other. You have to have your own relationship. 
And so understand that if you're single right now or that you're alone right now, don't despise that time. Learn everything that you can about yourself. Learn everything that you can about God because God is preparing you for something. He set you apart for something. So if you're uncomfortable in your lifestyle or in your station in life, hold on. God is letting you know there are opportunities out there for you to expand and develop and use your gift. You know, when you were once content with what you were doing and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this just don't, it just seems like life, there's just more to life than this. There's, a, there's some opportunities out there you're not taking advantage of. That's why you're starting to feel that way. That's why you're having a dissatisfaction where you're at. Because your spirit is saying there's more to, to life than this. There's more waiting for you. All you got to do is move. And a lot of times we don't want to move out of those comfortable places. But in order to grow and develop, we're going to have to move. We're going to have to be okay with being uncomfortable sometimes. And my final thought is don't get comfortable being comfortable. Let discomfort be your motivation to do better, want better, and be better. And remember, even in the uncomfortable places, even in the hard places in your life, God is still God. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. You guys have a very safe and uh, happy holiday. Hope you get to get some rest. Go fishing. Looks like the weather's not going to be too crazy. So enjoy your life every day. Don't, don't wait for a holiday. You, on, you enjoy your life today. Don't wait for somebody else to help you enjoy it. You enjoy it by yourself. Thank you guys for watching and happy uh, August because August is gone after midnight and we're going to be moving into September. You guys have a great night. Love you guys and I will see y'all soon. Bye.